So, um, in this video, um, I'll be talking about the causes of high fuel consumption. People that have experiencing high fuel consumption in their Pujo cars or having a black smoke symptom. That's when they start their Pujo cars or as they are, when they are accelerating, they'll be seeing black smoke coming out of the exhaust from the rear of the car. So that's what I'll be talking about because I've been getting a lot of emails, you know, sick people and Pojo users seeking for solutions to those symptoms they are experiencing. Oh, you can see this is Pojo 607. I think I'll probably do a review on this car. It's a very sweet car. So, um, so if you're having uh, that experience, it means uh, that I mean, if you're having a black smoke symptom, uh, your car it means uh, the car is actually consuming fuel. That's what that black smoke means. It means the unborn fuel is going out to the exhaust because uh, when there is too much fuel in the system, I mean, in the combustion system, they tend to go out to the exhaust uh, in that black form. So that's what it means. However, your car could also be consuming fuel without necessarily bringing out the blast smoke. So whichever way, I'm going to talk about the causes today. Especially uh, for petrol engines in Pojo cars. Uh, I wouldn't know much about the diesel cars. I'm not that much into it. I only talk about the petrol engines. So I'm going to group uh, group it into two. First will be the systems in these project cars that can, can cause the black smoke symptoms. And um, the second part will be the other components or systems of project cars that can cause high fuel consumption, but not necessarily giving you the black, black smoke symptoms. So, I will start with the first, um, the first um, systems I've talked about. As I'll, I'll group them into three. And they are the ignition system, injection system, and the exhaust system for all Pojo cars with uh, internal combustion engines. With, I'm talking of the petrol engines. So, for ignition, your spark, spark plug can actually increase your, five, your fuel consumption. And not just increase your fuel consumption, it can also give you the black smoke symptom. You may be, you may be thinking, no, it's not, uh, I know um, in the past, the older project cars, they don't really do that. The black smoke, when they, like, the, I'm talking of Pojo 504, 404 and all that, such cars, um, it's usually the carburetor that give that black smoke symptom, not necessarily the, the spark plus, which can also do that, but not as, um, as uh, extent it does in the modern Pojos. So yeah, spark plus, a weak spark plug can cause that, because spark plug is uh, an ignition system component. Then, uh, depending on the model of your Pojo, it may not necessarily be the spark plug that will cause it. It could be the spark plug um, extension wire, the one that comes from the um, distributor to the spark plug. Because if the, if the wire is broken or it's no, it's no longer communicating between the distributor and the spark plug, of course there's no way the spark plug will get uh, power to, to spark. So that one can also cause that. Then the second part of um, ignition system that can also cause black smoke is the coil, ignition coil. Of course, when the ignition coil is faulty, the spark plug will not work. So that one too can also can cause black smoke. Um, then CTS, actually have CTS uh, means uh, coolant temperature sensor. I think in the older Pojo, 
I was current temperature or something like current temist or something like that. So this is it. This is uh, one of the models. This one. This is a plug-in type. <coughs> so it depends on your engine model, your Peugeot engine model. Some are screwed type, while this one is a plug-in type. This type you can actually find them in TU engines. Um, not all TU engines anyway. Um, EW12 engines, not all anyway. I think mostly e EW12 uh, J4 that has um, E4 on the cylinder head. Then this is this is screw in type. You probably find this type on EW10 J4, ES9 J4, ES9 E and uh, some I think some TU TU3 engines also use this type, this screwing type. As small as this thing is, it also acts as ignition component. Uh, in fact it does dual work. It, it acts as ignition component and injection component. That's what it does. It helps to regulate the timing and um, even the sparking. Yeah, it can increase or decrease sparking. So these are the things that can actually these are the component ignition system components that can cause blast smoke. Um, and well, let me talk about the injection system. Your injectors can cause blast smoke when they are faulty or very dirty or clogged or partially clogged, depending. Injectors is what uh, most Nigerians or uh, local mechanics in Nigeria is called nozzles. So the fuel injectors can do that. Sometimes, you know, they have a coil inside, so those coils can fail and they won't be spraying as supposed to, or may not even spray at all, work at all. Then if they are dirty, they, they tend to spray uh, in a very wrong way. It's supposed to form a mist when they are spraying, but when they are very dirty, the spray pattern will change. So that can also cause high fuel consumption. In that case, probably um, servicing it, cleaning it will solve the problem. But if it has truly failed, if the core inside has failed, it's as good as replacement. Another thing that can cause uh, blast smoke uh, injections, the injection, one of the injection systems that can cause blast smoke is the MAP sensor, MAP. MAP sensor, I think I have it here. Yeah, this is MAP sensor. This one is actually for uh, ES9J4S and ES9A. And uh, actually, I think few of um, ES, no, EW10J4 also use this particular model. Then other ES, uh, EW engines and the rest, um, TU, SU, all that. I think the other projects like this one, this 505 V6, um, is uses this uh, MAF sensor, mass airflow sensor, MAF. So yeah, because they, they monitor the volume of air that comes into the engine or the vacuum in the system to determine the amount of oil that the injectors command, the ECU, engine ECU commands the injectors to spray in depending on the temperature of the engine and all that. So yeah, it can also increase fuel consumption and not just increasing the consumption, it will, it will cause blast smoke. It will give you black smoke symptom when faulty. Then CTS2, like I said, is also an injection component, both injection and the ignition. So because engine ECU, or the injection ECU uses this uses this CTS to to know amount of oil that goes into the combustion chamber because um, like I explained in one of my previous videos the lower the coolant temperature the higher the fuel consumption the higher the coolant temperature the lower the fuel consumption so and this is what tells the engine ECU the temperature of coolant. So if this is 40, 
Of course, the EC will not know exactly the, the temperature of your engine. And most times, it will assume that your engine is cold. So you always be, the engine will always be running very, very rich. That's, you'll be getting too much for energy. So this year, this, when 40 CTS can cause high fuel consumption uh, in the engine ECU or CTS. So, yeah, um, the other factors too, other injection components that can do that, such as uh, the fuel pump. Yeah, a weak fuel pump will cause um, low fuel pressure. And the low fuel pressure will increase the fuel consumption. Likewise, um, there's other components uh, called FPR, fuel pressure regulator. That can also cause high fuel consumption and blast smoke. All these components I'm mentioning uh, can give you black smoke symptom when they fail. Yeah, most people don't, you know, don't know about FPR, talking about the fuel pressure regulator, because it, it, that's what is the component that regulates the pressure of fuel, why fuel pump is working. So if uh, FPR fails, sometimes it behaves as if the fuel pump is the culprit. Now most people will go and change the fuel pump and won't change the FPR that is causing it. So you need to diagnose your car properly to know what is causing low fuel delivery or low fuel pressure before you go about uh, replacement of fuel pump. However, I've come to realize that a weak FPR, a 40 F FPR could, can make fuel pump fail uh, within a short time because the fuel pump will be overworking, doing all the work. It's supposed to be doing with the FPR, so yeah. FPR can cause that. Um, I've talked about CTS. Then vacuum leak. Vacuum leak is when, vacuum leak, I think I can talk about this, that, even though I've mentioned this already. When uh, additional air is going into the engine, other, from, other than the one that comes from the air filter box. Yeah, the, fuel, the, the car will, will cause, um, you will experience high fuel consumption and blast smoke sometimes. For example, on the, the injector rings, they, are, they, are, you know, they have what we call zero rings the, on top and on the bottom of the, the injectors, especially the one on the bottom, those zero rings, if they are broken, or have failed and no longer sealed up that opening where they are plugged in. Air could be going in from there. And once it starts going in from there, you can you experience uh, blast smoke. Though it gives other symptoms like um, uh, engine hunting. You, know, the, you observe that while the engine is idling, it will be going up and down on its own. But it's not a motor that could, could give you, it will give you that symptom. But um, there are other ways to find out if the uh, vacuum leak is coming from there. Probably I'll do that on a separate video. But the point is, vacuum leak can do that. Can give you fuel, it can give you blast mode symptoms. Then other places where um, you can get a vacuum leak is on the intake manifold. If there is a leak on the intake manifold, yes. Um, it will give you the blast smoke symptom. If there is a leak on any of the vacuum hoses on the engine, yeah, you can also get that blast smoke symptom. So these are the areas that um, you need to look at while diagnosing your project cars, or at least you have idea that, you, for example, if you don't have a scanner, you can actually eliminate all these things I'm talking by checking the one after the other to get to what is causing it. Um, other things that can cause that. Uh, the motorized total body, uh, it's not always all the time that it can give you that blast smoke symptom, but yeah, you can do that. You can actually do that because, um, hold on. Uh, when uh, MTB fails, uh, MTB is, uh, is the short form of motorized auto body for modern Peugeot cars. So when MTB fails, they tend to run erratically, uh, open and close uh, erratically. So 
uh, it can actually give you black smoke, but not as much as other components I've mentioned earlier. But yes, you can increase the fuel consumption and give you black smoke. It's one of the yeah, it's one of the components that can do that. Then another system. Um, on the third system that uh, can give a black smoke symptom. Another system of Pojo cars uh, that can give black uh, symptom is the exhaust system. Now, in the, in the exhaust system, we have two major components that can cause uh, black smoke and uh, increase fuel consumption. The first one is the catalytic converter. Like I said, my discussion here is modern Pojo cars, not the older ones. Because the modern ones, they all come with that catalytic converter, especially the petrol, the Pojo cars with petrol engines. So, the catalytic, catalytic converters, when they are partially blocked, if they are, they can cause the high fuel, they can cause the blast smoke, not just high fuel consumption. Because the engine will have to be struggling to run, because there will be um, restriction of airflow on the, on the exhaust. So, yeah, you will get that blast mode. However, there is a sensor that monitors the catalyst to tell you when they are faulty. But depending on some models, uh, some models of Pojo have more than one catalytic converters, and not all of them are monitored by this uh, sensor I was talking about. So, uh, that, that could also be very difficult to diagnose because if the sensor if it doesn't have any sensor monitoring it, how would you know? Unless you have to physically open up the catalyst and know, check um, if it's blocked or not. Though I think there are um, a lot of gadgets that can now do it without even physically removing the catalyst to check. Uh, there was one, a friend of mine um, in France. He did a video on that and uh, I actually like it. I think one of these days I will, I will have to purchase it. It's a good gadget, a small device that can actually, when you place it under the catalyst, it will tell you how good or bad it is on each of their locations. So yeah, catalyst converter can cause, give black smoke symptoms. There are another exhaust system component that can cause that is uh, oxygen sensors. I think I have an old one. This one has actually failed. Hope you can see that. Let me come in. Yeah. This is the oxygen sensors. This one is actually uh, the upstream. I don't know if you can see the green color very well. Yeah. This is the upstream. Upstream usually comes with a green color socket. So this one actually helps to fine tune the Fire consumption. So when it's faulty, it starts sending wrong signal to the engine ECU or injection ECU, and the um, injection ECU start uh, misbehaving. Yeah, I can use that word. Start misbehaving, start running the engine, uh, you know, in a malfunction manner, and the consumption will go high. But uh, there are some models I've observed. Or uh, some injection system have observed that even when uh, CG cells are failed, they may not necessarily give you the black smoke symptom. Some may give you sluggish uh, running. Uh, the car will be very sluggish. Some may not even give you any sluggish movement, but then uh, the only thing is the consumption will go high and the check engine light will come on. While some, as soon as the CG cells, upstream CG cells are failed, black smoke. As you are accelerating, the blast smoke will just be puffing out. So these are the things that can cause three major components that can cause um, that, uh, blast smoke. And then there's another oxygen sensor um, here. Like I said, this is up, upstream. Another oxygen sensor that, uh, that I did not mention before. That one is called downstream oxygen sensor. It's actually mounted uh, behind the catalytic converter. So it monitors the catalytic, catalytic converter to so know when they are faulty. That one, uh, I don't think, it doesn't, it won't give you blast smoke symptom when it's faulty. Only that, um, it won't be able to know the state of your catalyst since it has failed. 
some will, come, will also give you a sluggish running symptom, but not blast smoke. Which, of course, when a car is running sluggish, you have to throttle down for the car to be able to gain some movement. And to do that, that means high fuel consumption. So it will increase the high, your fuel consumption, but not blast smoke. So this is the only type of oxygen sensor that will give you blast smoke symptom. Uh, there may be other components, uh, that's injection, ignition, and there's all system components that can give that. But these are the only ones I can think of right now. Then the other parts that I talked about, you know, that can cause high fuel consumption but not blast smoke. It won't give you blast smoke, but it can also increase your fuel consumption of your Peugeot cars. Um, one of them is brake binding. Yeah, if you're having any brake, if any of your wheels or your brake is binding on any wheel, your fuel consumption will go high. Because what it means is, the, you know, brake binding means the brake is applying itself on that particular wheel or particular disc or hub or not hub, a uh, drum, depending on uh, the, 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 the side, if it's the rear or the front one. There are some project cars that come with rear drum brake system. So if your brake is binding, it will create uh, a lot of resistance. The engine will have to be dragging the car. So while it's doing that, it needs more energy to be able to move, pull the vehicle. And that energy, the extra energy requires is fuel consumption. It means it needs more fuel, more than required. So yeah, it will increase the consumption, but not necessarily, you won't see blast smoke coming out, but your fuel consumption will go high. So there are, there are so many ways you can tell if you're having any brake binding uh, uh, issue. One of the ways is, when you drive a car for like 30 minutes um, or more, or depending on the, te the, the temperature of the weather, you just find a, a, safe, a safe space, park the car, then use your hands, um, for example, this one, just use your hand, then touch here. Just touch on the wheel, don't touch inside the disc, just touch on the alloy wheel. If it's, um, this one is alloy wheel. If it's steel wheel and it has a wheel cover, just you there has to be a space where you can put your hand to touch the steel wheel. Reason why it is a very simple way of diagnosing a, a brake binding issue. Just do do this test on the four wheels. If it's if any of the wheel is binding, as soon as you touch it, it will become very, very hot. Or let me put it in a simple way. Any of the way that is hotter than the, the, the four is binding, period. But if no wheel is binding, even if you're driven for four hours, even if you have done two hours, you've traveled or everything, if you touch it, a worst case scenario will be just warm, but not hot. Not as hot, it won't be as so hot that, you know, it will burn your, your fingers, it won't do that. But if your wheel is binding, of course, there are other ways you can tell the way the car will be moving. Sometimes you'll be hearing um, a kind of uh, cranking sound. Ka -ka 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 -ka. Yeah, that's a sign that you're having a breakaway binding issue. Even though uh, overheating can do that same symptom, or uh, even when your knock sensor is faulty, you can do that as well. But then it's one of the signs that. Um, uh, that comes up when you have a brake binding issue. So if you're having a brake binding issue, yeah, your fuel consumption will go high, but not blast smoke. The second one is your driving style. I think I'm a um, victim of this, uh, guilty as, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, not really a victim. You know, I, I, I really, my driving style is not uh, the economy type. No, I don't drive for economy. I drive for fun. So whenever I'm behind any of my Pujo cars, I, I barely look at the fuel gauge. Okay, so I drive it in a very, I won't say harsh manner. I just push the RPM and catch my phone. So yeah, your driving phone can actually increase your fuel consumption. If you are the type that always accelerates beyond 3000 RPM, 
or when you are in a very close uh, area, you push your RPM too high and uh, you're always speeding uh, in town and all those things uh, increase your consumption. If, you are, if your daily driving involves driving only inside town all the time, inside streets, uh, all that, all those things will increase your consumption. Of course, highway driving consumes less fuel than city driving. So yeah, your driving style, or uh, the nature of the, your driving, where you drive to, um, your distance, all those things uh, contribute to high fuel or low fuel consumption. Like I said, you won't see blast smoke on the exhaust, but the consumption will be high. Then the engine cooling system is another uh, system that a lot of people do not know that contributes to high fuel consumption. Not just the high fuel consumption, even uh, determines the lifespan of your engine and your gearbox, especially the automatic gearbox. Yes, the 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 cooling system is a very important system that one should not be taking take one should not take it for granted, which a lot of Nigerians do take for granted. One of the components that can increase your fuel consumption without giving you blast smoke is the thermostat. This, even though this is not a Pojo thermostat, I think it's from I don't know, probably a Japanese engine. I don't know. I just saw it on the ground and picked. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you're running your engine uh, without thermostat, yeah, your fuel consumption will go high because your engine will always be running very cold, and the colder the engine, the higher the fuel consumption. Uh, another uh, cooling system component that can increase fuel consumption is um, um, the fan, the radiator fan. If you are the type that uh, anytime you buy a Pojo car, the first thing you do is to go and abuse the, co the factory fan connection and connect it to, spin, to, to be spinning constantly every time you switch, you start the vehicle or switch on ignition. Yeah, the consumption will go high. So once you, if your car, if your Pojo car is always, if the fan is always running every time you switch, you start the vehicle or you switch on your ignition, your car is consuming fuel more than you should. You don't need to see blast mode, but yeah, the consumption will be very high. So those are one of the components, uh, cooling system components that can increase fuel consumption. Um, another thing I've noticed that also is, uh, increases uh, fuel consumption is water. When you use water in cooling system, I know a lot of people will say, no, you can't be serious. But yes, this is my own personal observation. I did this test and um, I will explain how I did the test and confirm. First thing I did was, there was a time I needed to change my coolant in one of, in one of my Pojo cars. So I first drained it, put water and uh, took it for a drive on an expressway here in Abuja. It took it close to 30 minutes before the, the temperature gate started rising. As in before, in fact, I, I was so surprised, even with the thermostat, everything, the fan, factory connection, it took it longer than it should for the fan to, to the, for the temperature gate to get to 90 degrees Celsius. Even to even move up from zero degrees Celsius, it was that long. So I came back, allowed the engine to cool off. Then I think it was that time in the day or in the evening, I drained the water completely, put, uh, replaced it with coolant, took it for another drive. In fact, before I could enter the highway, the temperature gauge has gotten to 90 degrees Celsius, so immediately, as it was doing before I changed the, I changed and put water. So in this case, I don't need any theory or any opinion from any other person to know Using water in your cooling system causes more harm than you think it does. Because a lot of people do it because, oh, uh, what's the point by coolant when water can do the same work or do the same function? Well, yeah. Apart from that, the water will also uh, wash to your system, collode the entire cooling system, your radiator, your 
your engine block and so many other things. In fact, the, the most killer of water pump is water. If you are using only water, not that your water pump will fail very soon because what you usually do is water will go and lost the whole blade, water pump blade or depending on the type, metal, plastic or whatever. And they even damage the seal on the water pump. So water, water is not good for, for cooling system. Of course, by what I mean, coolant is actually a mixture of water and, and uh, antifreeze. So, but then, of course, um, it means you are not running only water in the system. So try and get drain all the water if that's what you have in the system and replace it with coolant. Um, is there any other cooling system component that can do that? Uh, I don't really think so. I think these are the two major ones that can increase the fuel consumption um, in a Pojo car with um, petrol engines. However, they won't give you black smoke symptom, but they will give you, um, you will have a high fuel consumption symptom. The another, another thing that can increase fuel consumption in a Peugeot car without giving you blast smoke is the, the gadgets you use in your vehicle. Electronic gadgets. Especially the aftermarket. Because some of these uh, factory fitted gadgets, they, they've done it in such a way that they will, uh, they will place less loads on the engine. But most of the aftermarket gadgets all these uh, woofer speakers and uh, high powered uh, radio or uh, whatever system you have gadgets you have you want to buy always make sure you check the load the wattage the the voltage what kind of load you to place on the internet because what usually happen is if it needs a lot of power to run very well if, uh, the, he, he, what he does is he, he, he starts dragging the alternator. He presses load on the alternator. alternator becomes draggy. So as the alternator is dragging, of course, you know it's the engine that drives the alternator to the auxiliary belt, um, uh, also called uh, alternator belt. So as that is going, that means engine will need more power to be able to drag the alternator. So as it's dragging the alternator, it needs, the additional power needed to do that requires more fuel. So all these things will increase your fuel consumption. So always make sure before you mount or install any aftermarket gadgets in your Peugeot car, or check the specification. There are so many ways to find that, only that you have to, so some that you have to mount it to know to how high it can consume your, um, or drag your alternator. For example, if it's at night, um, you put on your radio, aftermarket radio, and switch and turn the volume close to the highest. If they are light, if your headlights start dimming, or as the, the radio, the speaker is booming, blasting music, if, if you notice that the headlight is dreaming a little while it's doing that, it's an indication that it's draining a lot of power or requires a lot of power to, to maintain um, the battery from draining. In that case, alternator is dragging. So that's one of the ways to find out. Another, another thing that can increase fuel consumption without affecting uh, or giving you black smoke symptom is um, the engine oil. Yeah, I don't even say how, how come. Yeah, engine oil. Most of these thick engine oils will make the engine drag or uh, yeah you, you know you, the engine will not run very smoothly it increases consumption but this uh, fully synthetic light oil makes it easier for the engine to run smoothly and uh, reduces the consumption so if you are the type that put anything that looks like engine oil in your Peugeot car know that you are the one causing high fuel consumption in your car so don't complain Project have uh, listed out all the commanded engine oil for each of their modern project cars, and they, you can find them online. 
If you don't have the manner, if you bought your car and you didn't come with manner, you can check for the look for the manner online or you look for the, uh, I don't know, just find a way to uh, uh, get the recommended engine oil for your Pojo car so that you stop abusing it. Um, something else I want to talk about um, is uh, how you can actually tell, even if you are not seeing blast smoke from the exhaust. But if you want to know if your car is truly consuming fuel, there is a way you can do that without plugging any scanner. Now let me show you something. Now this is, um, I can see this exhaust tail. Let me zoom in. This is the exhaust tail of Pojo 505 V6. Now, if you touch this place, let me see. Can you see? Okay, this one is, uh, let me see. You see? Just very light um, suit. Not, what do you call this suit? What do you call this suit? So this can actually tell you if your car is consuming fuel or not. What I usually do is, It. So what I do is every month I will clean that place on all my Pojo cars. I will just put get a rag or something, clean the exhaust, and then drive it for another two weeks or one month. Then before that one month elapses, I'll go there and put my hand. If I touch a dark suit there, it means the car is consuming fuel, even if uh, your uh, scanner is saying otherwise. Or even if um, it didn't show you any check engine light, or it didn't give you any sign that any electrical uh, uh, component is faulty. That's one thing, the engine is faulty. But as long as you touch and get a very dark suit there, what it means is high fuel consumption. But if you touch it and you didn't see much, that, that means there is no consult, no, the consumption is okay. Of course, um, after that one month of drive, like this one, I think uh, last, I've been doing it for like two weeks now. Not that I drive it every day anyway. So, and you can see, I didn't get much suit from it. An indication that the consumption is okay. So, what I would suggest to you is go now, if you are not the type that I've been cleaning, or go now, clean it drive it for like two, three days or one week, then go and touch that place. If you get soot or very dark uh, substance on your hand, that means on your fingers, it means the consumption inside. I don't know, maybe I'll check any other car here. Okay, let's see if we can check this one. Um, all right, can you see that? Now, have you seen the difference between this and mine? Okay. So, you see the difference? This is an indication that this car is consuming too much fuel. It's burning fuel more than required. Let me show you mine again. This is the other car from the other car. Uh, you see, this is mine. So you don't need, necessarily need a scanner to tell you a car that is consuming fuel. This one and this one. You can, from here you can tell which one is, the consumption is high or low. I think I will stop this video here. Just to, um, I was intended to do this video today because um, I've been getting so many mails, like I said earlier, and I can't be able to reply all the mails at once. It's explaining, but with this video, a lot of people, I believe, uh, will benefit from it. And then take the, whatever measures they can to prevent high fuel consumption in their cars. I want you to understand this. Any car that brings a suit like this, after a long time, your your rings, your pistons may start failing. But what, because what usually happens is 
when the fueling, when the fuel that goes in becomes too much, not every every fuel, not the the whole some of the fuel will not burn. So the, those ones that did not burn, some will go out to the exhaust and blast smoke, while the rest will drain and pass through the rings. As it's passing through the ring, they are going into the oil pan. By oil pan, I mean the oil sump, or what some people call, um, what's it called, so, um, uh, forgotten the local name they give it here. Yeah, so as it's going into the oil sump, it's mixing and diluting your engine oil. As it's diluting your engine oil, it starts wearing off your crankshaft, your camshaft, and give it time, your engine will go. So don't let your engine, don't let your exhaust give you this black suit for a long time to figure out what is causing it. So this one of the way. So uh, I hope this video is something that will benefit you. If it really does, if this thing, if this video really benefits you, you can share it to other people so that they learn from it. Even if you don't drive Pooja, I believe you'll learn something from this video. It's one of the things I do for free so that people will not um, have cause to be disappointed in their Pooja cars. I'll see.